In today's video, I'm going to share with you the fastest and easiest way to declutter your closet. I'm so passionate about this because as someone who struggles with my weight, I know how emotional and toxic your closet can be. So I'm going to show you right now. We're going to say enough is enough and we're going to create a functional, beautiful closet that makes us feel good about ourselves. And the first step is to clear off your bed. You don't have to make the bed, but pull up the blankets and get everything off and go in your closet and pull one hanger out, just any hanger you want. And look at this article of clothing and ask yourself, does this fit me today? Do I like the way that I look in this? Does this make me feel good about myself? And if the answer is no, it goes. You're tossing it on the bed. I don't want you to worry about it's not leaving your house forever. I don't want you to think about this is expensive or where is this going to go? We're only asking, does this make me feel good or bad about myself? Because clothing that makes you feel bad is toxic. It's a bully and it doesn't belong in your closet. If it's yes, I actually really like this dress. I want you to put it back with the hanger turned backwards. So turn your hanger around and hang it back in your closet and grab something else. We're moving fast. We're grabbing something out and we're saying, does this fit me today? Do I like this? Does this make me feel good about myself? The truth is this makes me look a little saggy in this region. And every time I wear it, I think I, think I need to buy a better bra. It's not the bra. It's the age. And so this makes me feel insecure. So the, it's no, it's gotta go. Toss it on the bed, grab something else from your closet, pull it out. Does this fit me? Yes. Do I like this? Not really. I do like the color, but it's a little high cut. So I feel insecure about my stomach and I'm constantly pulling it. What this is saying is you are fat. You need to do more stomach exercises. This makes me feel bad about myself. And we all have clothing in our closet that makes us feel this way. And so if it feels that way, on the bed, on the bed. Okay, let's grab something else. I want you to do this exercise, not only because your closet is going to be more functional, but every morning you wake up, the first thing you do is get dressed. If you have clothing in your closet that's making you feel fat, ugly, old, too skinny, not in shape, not good about yourself. It's a toxic bully. And whether you know it or not, that feeling of self-hate, that feeling that you're not good enough, that you're not pretty enough, that you are not anything enough, carries with you all day long. And we're letting our clothing do this to us. So we're making those decisions. It's yes, no. It's yes, I feel good. We put it back with it turned around. No, it makes me feel bad. We're tossing it on the bed. And this is so fast. And the thing I love most about this is we're not making a huge mess. We're gonna deal with the clothing on the bed at the end. I'm gonna show you how to deal with the toxic stuff. We don't have to get rid of it, but it's not going back in here. But if you decide you want a break or you need to stop, we can stop and all of the hangers that are still the normal way, that's what you know you still have to declutter. So it's simple, it's easy, it's fast, and we're not creating a huge mess. Grab something and ask yourself, do I like this? Does it make me feel good? Does it fit me today? And if the answer is no, we're putting it on the bed because it's got to go. This is about self-love. This is about self-esteem. This is about standing up for ourselves against the bullies in our closet that are making us feel like crap. And I promise you, when you're doing this, you are going to find clothing that makes you feel bad. Maybe it's clothing that you had from the 90s, you know, where you were like doing your thing and you were clubbing and you felt great. And maybe it still fits, but maybe you're in a different phase of your life. And that's not you anymore. And if you're looking at and then wishing and reminiscing and, and thinking, I wish I was this person again, it's toxic. Even if it fits you, it is not an option of something you can put on your body in this moment. And therefore it does not belong in your closet because the only thing it's doing is taking up space and making you feel bad. So let's do this together. I hope you're going to get up and, and go to your closet and really try this today. Pulling things out and saying, oh, I loved this shirt for like a hot moment. 
I've been every size and I've been 250 pounds. I've been 120 pounds. I gained weight back. And so when I was my smallest, I loved this little peekaboo shirt, but now I feel self-conscious about my stomach. And every time I pull it out as an option, I'm like, oh yeah, I like this shirt. Oh yeah. It makes me feel bad about myself. Why am I putting it back in the closet? If I put this on my body, I feel fat. I feel old. I feel unfit. I feel bad. It's toxic. It's a bully. It makes me hate myself and it's time to go. And I want you to do the same thing in your closet because this is empowering. This means I don't care if you only have five things hanging in your closet. Trust me, you'll have more. But, but these aren't options anyways. These aren't options. They're toxic and negative bullies. They're not inspiring us to work out. They're not inspiring us to lose weight. They're calling us names and it stays with us all day long. So go through your whole closet, turn all those hangers around in six months, anything that's still backwards, you know, that can leave, but you're going to feel so good about yourself. And that's what this is all about. Okay, so let's jump to the clothing that is left on the bed. What do we do? I didn't even want you taking off the hanger. We're just tossing it out. So now you're gonna make two piles. You're gonna make a pile for, I actually like this shirt if I did lose weight, I'm gonna keep it somewhere in my house. And this thing is a toxic dumpster fire. And even if I was perfect, I still wouldn't wear this. It's gotta go. So it's a someday maybe, or fantasy us. I'm letting, we're keeping those things and absolutely, absolutely not. Dumpster fire has got to go. So doing this allows us to just donate all the dumpster fire stuff and the things that are maybe, I want you to vacuum seal them or put them in totes under your bed, in your storage room, in the attic, in the basement, find space for these to go, but they are 100% not going back in your bedroom. They are not going in your closet. They are not going to, you're not gonna see them because they're gonna make you feel like crap, okay? I want you to stand up for yourself, put boundaries on yourself, have the self-respect that you deserve because you deserve a closet that is filled only with clothes that fit you and make you feel good. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you are feeling like you need a little more of this tough love inspiration, I'm going to put a link down below to the 30 day organizing boot camp where we do this together. We have real hard talks and we get to the emotional side of decluttering so that we can have a house that is filled with Ah, simplicity, but also positivity. A house that makes us feel good and not bad. All the toxic clutter is leaving. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time. Hey guys, thanks so much for those of you who have stayed to the end. So the story today, it's not funny, but it's a little funny. My family thinks it's funny. It's more uh, traumatic. Is that the word? I'm being raw with you. I wasn't going to share this story, but I just feel like after today's video, it kind of goes hand in hand because I struggle with insecurity. And last Friday, I did something so stupid because I was so insecure and I want to share that story with you, but I have to back up first because a few years ago, I tried Botox and I posted a story about that. I really hated it. But since then, I've gone back to this doctor a few times for little like face things, trying to help my face, trying to get things fixed up here. And there's like basically one dermatologist in my entire town and this is it. And she is so rude, rude, blunt, honest. What's the word? The first time she saw me, she said, I know you want Botox, but the problem is your nose. It's hideous. It, it wreck your face. That's what she said. My nose wreck my face. Too wide, too short. She says, I fix. I fix your nose. And I was like, oh my God, I don't want a nose job. She said she could put filler in between my eyes to lengthen my nose and make it look less stubby, piggy, whatever it is. 
I have struggled with my nose my entire life. In grade two, my nickname was Miss Piggy, and that stayed with me my whole school year. And I laugh it off. Kids would oink at me. My nose is giant for my face. It's wide, it's stubby, it, it is what it is. But it's always been one of my biggest insecurities. And so to have a doctor tell me that it wrecked my face and that she can fix it, I was like, do I wanna do this? I was like, no, I'm not getting fillers. I'm not getting needles. I'm not doing that. I'm fine with myself just the way I am. Fast forward to Friday when I go to see her again, talking about possible microblading of my eyebrows because I went to this women's event and these women all had Botox and microblading and lips and they looked fabulous. And they were like, Cass, you gotta do it. So I just went to talk to her and she was like, I fix your nose first, your nose, it's hideous. I fix your nose. So I was like, oh my God. She's like, just a little bit of filler. So she puts filler. Filler, not like wears off in a couple months filler, like permanent, some kind of acid in my face filler in between my eyes to fix it. And she holds up the mirror and I'm like, I have a third eye. I said it was a Cyclops. My son said, no, Cyclops only have one eye. I have three. I don't know what that's called, but it was like so swollen. And then some of it started leaking down. Now I have a bump on the side of my nose. It went up by my eyebrow. You might not be able to tell on camera, but every time I look in the mirrors, the first thing I see is this like bulging, hard, freaking, it looks like a pimple that isn't red in the middle of my face. And I'm craving my old nose. I'm like, what was I thinking? I wish I had my old nose back, right? Like, like I'm now like, what an idiot I am. I'm so insecure. I let someone put permanent filler into my face, knowing in my gut that I didn't want to do it and that I should have been happy with myself just the way I was. And now I have to get it dissolved. Not only that, she charged me $500 to give me a Quasimodo nose. And she did a bad job and it leaked down and it's awful. And the point is, I didn't need it in the first place. And so if you're ever feeling insecure, if you're looking at other women your age and you're like, why do you look so good and I look so ugh, um, I want you to know you're not alone and it's normal and everyone's feeling insecure and, and we need to, what do we need? We need to just love ourselves the way we are. Pfft, easier said than done. Basically, you gotta wreck your face first to appreciate the face you had. Is that my tip? Jack up your face so that you get it. No, that's not my, my tip. I have no advice. I have no advice. I just want you to know that you're not alone and that I really had a tough life lesson that I don't want you to have to live through. You're perfect.